This is a video about my idea of a home makerspace. A place I have been working on in order to transform a section of the dining room in a rather small house into a productive workspace. Somewhere that can become a natural place for learning and tinkering and making things that's not hidden away in the basement or spare bedroom or garage. I mean, the whole idea behind this space, in my opinion, is that the makerspace should be centrally located in an open area within the home, which co-workers and friends and family members can use. So it's not a private space. It's a place that hopefully will make work easier and more integrated into our lives because it's part of our everyday structure. So when I was first thinking about this space, I wanted it to become a useful area for working with all sorts of different materials such as fabric and wood and leather and plastic. So there needed to be storage for different types of tools and a big enough workspace so that you could do various work. So that's the basic idea. So far, I have created four videos about this process in which we've worked on the different sections. The counter has taken the longest and this is the central part of the space. We made it using rough sawn lumber and milling it down into manageable pieces and then gluing it in sections to create this rather large work area. However, even though we decided to do it this way, I mean, you could just as easily use any work surface that fits your space and your budget. Storage has been another major component to figure out. Since our house is very small and since I really wanted to fit as many things as possible, plus utilize the space really well, we have worked on storage high and low, creating cabinets all the way up to the ceiling and drawers and cabinets below for other tools. Now when we last left off, the counter had just been finished and it was time to complete the various details. So first up we have the center drawer unit. So Matt started cutting up a bunch of plywood pieces for a skeleton frame and throughout this project we've been using pure bond plywood that we ordered from Home Depot online. Now we'll use several different kinds of theirs such as pre-primed plywood as well as mahogany plywood both in half inch and quarter inch size. And all the pure bond plywood is made with a soy-based formaldehyde-free glue, so it's nice to know that there won't be any weird off-gassing over time, especially since this is going within our home. So the space in the middle here is actually pretty wide, so we figured two drawers would be nice. So here he's putting together a frame, just using glue and staples and reinforcing with some screws. And that way we can attach the drawers to the frame and make sure everything fits well and then simply install the frame within the center space. For the drawers we're using some half inch maple. And this is solid mahogany for the face frames, so it will match the rest of the bottom cabinets. Here routing rabbits to connect the drawers together. And uh, this is some pre-finished quarter inch plywood for the bottoms, which is really nice. We decided to go for a pretty straightforward construction for the drawers and just gluing and screwing these together here. So here's the idea for the frame and the drawers fit inside. So next here is attaching the drawer slides. And we just used some scrap pieces of wood, which the slides are leaning on, to attach them to the same height on all sides. Okay, so 
this center unit is now in place and the next step here is to add some face panels I've got some nice solid uh, mahogany going on top of here and that's going to kind of create a nice uh, sleek look I decided I wanted the face frames to add kind of a roundish effect to the front so I want to curve the outer edges of it and to do that I used a plane and of course you have to be careful going cross grain so you don't tear too much off. To secure the face frames, I first positioned them with hot glue and then secured in place from the inside. Since this space will be for education and creative work, I really wanted chalk paint on the back wall and we had previously put up plywood partly to hide the textured walls and to give more flexibility where to put stuff on the wall. And I just love chalk paint. It's such an easy and cheap way to transform a space and really practical too. Then some trim work is nice to add since it really adds yeah, a really nice and finished touch and this is regular quarter round trim. For the upper cabinets, we made some trays on drawer slides, so it would be easier to access things and yeah, take things in and out of there. Other details to finish were completing the edge banding on the plywood, as well as putting on the hardware. Uh, as well as using this jig here to drill holes on the inside so I could have adjustable shelves in there. One of the last larger things to finish are these middle shelves. So for that we're using some beautiful sapili and just trimming them on the table saw here. And then planing them to get them nice and straight. The pieces were not quite deep enough so gluing two pieces together and I'm using dowels to line them upright. And using a little jig like this really makes it a lot easier to make sure everything goes right. The Sapili pieces were a little different in color, so here's staining them with a mahogany gel stain. And that really evens it out and creates a really beautiful look. To hold the shelves on the wall, we decided on something a little different. So this is a 2x6 cut at an angle. Then these pieces got a coat of chalk paint to match the wall. And here we have a bunch of one inch dowels, cut to about the same depth as the shelves. Then one inch holes are drilled into the wood, the dowels inserted, and then the shelves can rest on the dowels and everything gets screwed onto the wall. Now, a rather useful thing to have in a makerspace is, of course, power. So there is an outlet below the counter, 
But in order to access it, we needed to drill a hole through the wood. This is pretty tough. I think we went through like three or four drill batteries. But then finally we got through. Okay. And we had ordered this flange that fit perfectly in the hole uh, to make it nice and neat. So finishing touches here. I decided it would be fun with a change in color on the walls. Then putting stuff in the cabinets, fabric in the top ones. Photography related in the right one, so developers, film, measuring glasses, that kind of thing. For a couple of the thin drawers, I thought it would be nice to line them with some fabric. So for the woodworking tools like chisels, carving knives, pliers, etc. It adds a little softness and I just added a little bit of hot glue to keep the fabric in place. Then of course I needed labels for the drawers. So I brought out my typewriter and wrote the contents on nice paper. Okay, so now when the space is pretty complete, I thought I would go over kind of the process here. What kind of went right, what I was thinking along the way. What's important when you want to create something like this is to plan it really well, uh, especially in terms of ordering material. So we ordered everything right away, and then of course you had to store it, uh, all the, the plywood and stuff that we didn't use because this took a long time to make. I really wanted to create a very custom space. I wanted a deep counter. This is 30 inches, uh, which is a lot deeper than a traditional kitchen counter, which is what, like 24 inches normally? As a result, the cabinets below are also deeper. And I can see why kitchen cabinets are usually made the way they are, in the sizes they are, because that's how you get the most out of one sheet of plywood. <laughs> But here, we had to use more, and we decided to go with mahogany plywood. And the thing about that though is that the mahogany pieces didn't come in, in full sheets, they came in like 2x8s and 4x4s. And because we had this custom size here, we had to kind of over order a bit, uh, which was not a problem because I was working with Pure Bond on this project. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind, that when you create custom sizes, you do tend to use more material. The, uh, the, the mahogany plywood below uh, is really something that I really liked working with. And considering it's not that much more money compared to regular plywood, I think it is really like worth it, really cool, because you definitely get a different look from what you would get otherwise. Plus, I think it's a lot easier to work with. Regular plywood that you paint, uh, I hate painting it, it just takes forever. And it's really hard to get a really nice painted finish sometimes. Whereas when you use like a plywood like this, all you need is to shellac or put on some polyurethane. It's very easy to create a nice finish uh, with that. And it's a lot faster because you don't need as many coats. And then of course if you use edge banding and you go through, you went through quite a lot of edge banding, you use it more than you think. But then you get these nice like solid looking pieces. Um, which is kind of cool. The other thing I guess I want to kind of point out is that the construction for a lot of these things in here is very simple. Doors and the boxes are just made with plywood pieces and then another piece on the back to kind of create this, this inset look. And when I think about this face here, I think, okay, there are a couple of like showstopper pieces, like the counter, for example, as well as this piece right here. And that's kind of what gonna draw your eye when you look at this space, and a lot of other things kind of melt away in the background. So going with simple construction for the most part is really like, it's great. Um, <laughs> of course, I would not call this counter a simple construction because we used rough sawn lumber when we made it. And it was just, it's just, it's been a, it was a massive, massive job uh, making this counter. But of course, it, it was made it possible to create something like this, which is really cool. But if you who watching this are also thinking about creating a space like this, um, I'm not sure I would recommend doing this. <laughs> um, unless you just have a lot of time on your hand and you really just feel like playing. But I mean, there are many, many ways to get a good work surface. 
and I really wanted a smooth and nice work surface here so that because this is a home environment and I mean I I, this is not gonna be like where I chisel on this bench. It's gonna be down on a separate piece if I chisel in here. This piece right here is definitely very unique. And when thinking about this, I'll show you. These drawers are not exactly traditional size drawers. When you think about storing papers and pens and, and some tools and some sewing supplies and things like that, you really don't need a lot of height. Um, and if you were able to create lots of these little drawers, you can just stack them, you know, fit a lot in there. And we created these with wooden drawer slides, um, which I really like, uh, because first of all, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> this would be a lot of drawer slides to get. Um, and secondly, it also enabled this design to be created, because if you had uh, traditional like metal drawer slides, then that would kind of add size to the sides and you wouldn't be able to have, you'd have to have a larger face frame so you wouldn't be able to see the dovetails in the same way and I think that's kind of cool so anyway um, after <laughs> a long time and lots of work uh, this space is finally ready and of course I'm planning on kind of add to it as I go along and as I kind of figure out what exactly I need in here Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for, for coming along with me on this journey. It's been quite the ride. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye! Because you stuck around till the very end, I wanted to just go over a few ideas I have real quick. Things that I want to make for the space now, now that it's finished. So first of all, I want to create some lighting. I want to have lighting all around in here and possibly under as well. So it is very well lit. I'm also thinking about creating some, you know, those kind of, what do you call it? Like, like bathroom mirrors that have this accordion arms. I picked up some of these, these mirrors with the accordion arms. I want to take the mirrors off and I want to have those accordion arms with lights coming out on the sides here so that you can kind of extend them for more lighting. I think that could be cool. Um, other than that, I want to put up a, a screen here with a computer, but I don't want anything to interfere on the desk itself. So I'm going to create like a little leather storage unit where I can put the mouse and the keyboard and things like that. So it's out of the way when you're not using it. And I'm planning on kind of working with leather for storage in general, probably over here, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. So lighting is a prime thing that I want to figure out because lighting here is not that great. Um, and otherwise, I guess I'll just see what happens as time moves along.